Lord Patton, I think of the sacrifice of the British up and down the Pacific uh, Rim, including aiding China in World War II, and the reach has changed. What can Britain do about a Hong Kong where one of the dissidents today framed it as a dictatorship? Yeah, it's, turned, it's turning into a, just a replica of the police state, the surveillance state uh, in mainland China. And uh, I'm afraid it's, it's a reminder of the fact that you can't trust anything China promises to do. We've seen today um, the snuffing out of the last remnants of democracy uh, in Hong Kong. Um, Carrie Lam says she's uh, very much in favour of diverse opinions in the Legislative Council. Don't believe it for a moment. Anyway, she doesn't really run Hong Kong anymore. Hong Kong is run by the Chinese Communist Party and its local boss in Hong Kong. Uh, but what you've seen, I'm afraid, um, is um, of uh, the extent to which China is involved in a war of values against liberal democracies in Europe, in, in the Americas, uh, in Britain. And what we have to do is to work together, not establishing a cold well, war, with, but, but actually stopping China, undermining the values which we hold uh, so important and which have determined Hong Kong's success for the last uh, years. Lord Patton, I learned about sanctions 34 years ago, and I would suggest that Senator Biden was involved with this, with the sanctions of Washington against South Africa and the stunning idea that possibly they worked. If Hong Kong is a center of capitalism, a center of international finance, will sanctions work against the territory or against Beijing? Well, that's a very good question. It's why I've always been rather doubtful about sanctions as a policy. Uh, and I think we've very often thrown them around as an alternative to doing other things. When I was governor of Hong Kong, I used to lobby very enthusiastically against imposing sanctions on China or, or Hong Kong. Uh, but you've got to avoid anything you do to support Hong Kong at the UN, in human rights organizations and so on. You've got to try to make sure that it doesn't hurt Hong Kongers uh, if you want to do things, they should be aimed at China and Chinese officials. And I certainly think that things like Magnitsky legislation are very valuable in, in dealing with uh, the thugs who run police states. I, I think they've been helpful in relation to Russia, in, in that they'll, they'll be helpful insofar as it matters um, to them in Belarus. And I think they're quite helpful in China and Hong Kong. But I certainly want to avoid anything which hurts people in Hong Kong. That's not what we want to do. China is hurting people in Hong Kong. Look, for years, Hong Kong's great success as a spectacular market economy has been based on free capital, on free information, and the rule of law. And you take two of those things away, and the third starts to weaken. But Christopher Patton, how will a Biden administration navigate this? Well, to be fair to uh, President Trump, who's departing office, I imagine, even as we speak. Uh, to be fair to President Trump, um, he did actually focus on the menace represented by China to the international community and to liberal democracies. I'm not sure what he's doing at the moment actually helps the case for liberal democracy, but that's by the by. What I think uh, Mr. Biden will do um, as president is something which uh, wasn't President Trump's strong point, and that is to build alliances to work together with others, with Australia, with Europe, with New Zealand, with Canada, with India and others, with South Korea, with Japan, because all of us have the same interest in stopping um, uh, China, destroying the sort of world we want and destroying the sort of values that we hold to be so important. I'm not, I'm not in favor of containing China. I am in favor of constraining China and stop it ravaging the rest of the world. We know of the responsibility but, Chinese secrecy has had in, in uh, allowing the pandemic um, of coronavirus to, to, to be such a force, a terrible force in the world. We mustn't <clears throat> allow China to destroy yeah. other parts of uh, the international community and international life. But, Lord Patton, given um, the West and NATO allies actually some would argue, didn't handle Russia as it should have four or five years ago. What makes you confident that they can now handle an even more important force like China? I think that's a very good question. Um, I think what we've got to recognize is the, um, the best thing we can do for Hong Kong is by making sure that we hold on to 
our values, democracy, rule of law, freedom of speech and freedom of the press and so on, that we hold on to those things. Um, and I hope that in due course, um, Hong Kong will have those qualities back again. <clears throat> but we're certainly, we're certainly not going to help, going to immediately be able to change China, but we must be able to stop China changing us. That's the threat, and we can only deal with it if we work together in a partnership. I'm very much in favor of the Trans-Pacific Partnership, and I hope um, that a President Biden uh, will return to that um, proposition. Lord Patton, because of the tenure and the overlap, I must ask you about the former Prime Minister John Major's comments in recent days about the placement of the United Kingdom in world international relations. Has Britain become a second-rate power? Well, we're not a great power any, anymore. Um, I think we matter. Um, I think we're, um, uh, in terms of our economic strength, we're fifth or sixth in the world, depending on how you make the calculation. Uh, we've got uh, a stronger military than most other Europe, than all other European countries, I think. We've got a very good diplomatic service. We've got the biggest aid program um, in, uh, uh, in Europe and one of the biggest in the world. So, so we do count. We count rather less if people think we break our international agreements. And there's, there's some problems about whether we'll do that in leaving the European Union, because we're um, trying to legislate at the moment, or rather the government is, um, to uh, uh, escape some of the obligations which we've already agreed with um, Europe in order to try to safeguard the Good Friday Agreement. That would be very bad for our international reputation. But John Major was entirely right. We're not a great power. Um, I think we're a great country still, uh, and I hope that we won't undermine that by the way we behave. And I hope that we'll still be able to strike a deal with Europe, because leaving the European Union with no deal would probably be the greatest act of self-harm, not least to our economy, that we've performed since the Second World War.